The Lord is speaking. You have entered New Era with Prophet Cynthia G. West in consultation with the Prophetic Council, Bishop Anthony Gilliard, Bishop Darius Nixon, and Prophet Andre Cook. Numbers 12 and 6 states, and he said, Hear my words, if there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak with him in a dream. A new era has begun. God bless you and welcome again to the new era. We are so grateful that you have stayed to join us, to be a part of what God's going to do this afternoon. I believe God's got a word just for you. Wherever you're at and whatever you're going through and however things may look, the word of God said, for we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen, they are eternal. I want you to know God's got something that nobody else can work it like you can work it and no one else can take it from you. What is yours, according to the scripture, it's going to be yours. We honor God for his goodness and his mercy. Well, Acts 17 says today that he made the world and everything in it since he is the Lord of heaven, but out of the living translation but he doesn't live in man-made temples. I want you to know he's living in you right now. If you have accepted the Lord in your life, if you have accepted the Lord in your life, no matter what your conscious mind may be saying, God dwells within you right now. And I would take that power of God and begin to bless him and praise him because whatever's going you're going through, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Well, connect with someone and let them know that the council, the council is here. And we are so grateful. Tell them that the prophets are on. And I know they have a word. I know there is a blessing just for you. Come on, let's welcome the prophets at this time. Men of God, we are so grateful to have you. God is so good. How are you doing, Prophet Cook? Wonderful. Thank you for asking. I appreciate the opportunity to join you and, of course, Bishop uh, Nixon and Bishop Gilliard and to those who constant and uh, uh, constant viewers and those who are viewing for the first time today. I've heard that something wonderful is happening on the Saturday before Easter. Yada, 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 yada. <laughs> Please yada. tell our viewing audience. So if they would share. I appreciate it. I am celebrating my 60th birthday. My official yeah. birthday was on March 2nd. And uh, the church has decided to throw me a dinner celebration on uh, Saturday, the, the 30th, 5 p.m. at the, what is that, the uh, end at New High Park of Jericho, okay. Jericho Turnpike. Uh, Something that they've put together, uh, as I've shared with you, I have been resistant. I just wanted to slip into this 60th quietly this decade. Uh, day. So that's what's going on. And if they're interested, uh, reach out to someone or so forth. It's uh, I, I appreciate it. But I, I would like to say this yourself, Bishop Nixon and uh, Bishop Gilliard, who have um, been not just colleagues, but my friends, I appreciate you all. And then for those who have uh, just, it's weekly, someone is sending me a note of uh, congratulations and a gift of love. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate all that you've done and that uh, you have expressed. Uh, and I'm thankful. Thank you. Amen. Oh, wow. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. I am just telling you, you're carrying that 60 quite well yes oh well I, i'm trying to rejoin the so this scruffy today is uh i'm trying to rejoin you're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna grow that too yeah i'm trying to grow it back in especially for this celebration and uh i i i miss the the, the, the natural gray that sits here so the debonair look <laughs> 
<laughs> Bishop Nixon has that debonair, you know, like, wow, wonder what does he do for a living? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's not true. That, you've set me a right up many a times. You have blessed my life. So you do quite a bit. How are you, Bishop? I'm doing very well. Thanks be to God. Uh, the Lord is so, so, so gracious. And um, I am just really basking in the commemoration of this whole week. And yeah. so um, ever since Sunday, I've just been on a spiritual high and just appreciating my salvation. And, um, you know, the old saints would say, I'm just glad to be saved. Yes. I'm but you so made a statement saved. that's so wonderful. Appreciating. Yeah. I don't hear that too often. I'm appreciating yeah. my salvation. I'm appreciating the opportunity of this. You know, uh, you know, Bishop Desnit, undone. You know, I, I, I'm, I, I join uh, Isaiah. He said, "For I'm, I am undone." Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, Paul even said, "Oh, wretched man that I am." Mm -hmm. And just knowing, you know, I, I know we're in a day where we have to paint this facade about ourselves mm -hmm. uh, socially, but um, knowing that I am undone, you, you, you know the truth about yourself, mm -hmm. and and I know me. <laughs> And I am, anyone uh, else. Yeah, I'm I'm not worthy. And mm -hmm. uh, so to be touched uh by the grace of God and to be saved, it is uh it's it's humbling and, and I'm so grateful for my salvation. You know, uh, waking up this morning uh <clears throat> and looking at the events that happened there in Baltimore with the bridge there yes. and our prayers and our thoughts. Uh, I think I can speak for everyone on this platform, go mm -hmm. out to those uh, that are in that area and other areas who were impacted and affected, unfortunately, by that incident and that event there. And we're just really sending out our prayers. But, you know, when when things happen like this, um, it, it ought to put all of us in a mental space that says, if it had not been the Lord. Oh, yes. You know, you know, grateful, grateful to still be alive, grateful to still be here. It could be any of us and, and we should just really live grateful. So I'm, I'm grateful today. I'm grateful today. Happy birthday to Prophet Cook. And Thank uh, you. You know, again, he's, he's, he's Thank definitely uh, looking magnificent for, for 60. <laughs> Amen. You know, they black say black, don't black don't crack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hey. telling you, I'm hearing it well, because I wouldn't tell my age for anything. No, you know? <laughs> no, 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 no. Just let people keep on guessing. You keep on guessing. You worry, you worry about that. <laughs> All right. But it's just so wonderful because it's we're living in a day and time that people don't appreciate their lives. No. no. And if you don't appreciate your life, then you mm. won't appreciate my life. Oh, no, you won't have any regard for it. And the last time I was talking to my husband about the bridge, he said they were still looking for seven people. I don't know whether they've gotten them or rescued them or, but just the thought of something like that would happen when millions of people are crossing bridges in this country yes. every day, every day. Yes. But yet what a mighty God we serve. What Praise a mighty God. God. Prophet, would you please start us off with a word from the Lord? Amen. Yes, the Lord spoke to me as we were gathering and preparing to come on today. And he said, encourage my people that he is committed to their welfare. The Lord says, tell my people, wow, 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 wow. I am committed and I remain committed to their welfare. And while you did not start well, the Lord says, if you trust me, you will finish well. Believe in the Lord your God. Continue to belong to the community of faith and his family. 
and you will become all that he has for you. He is going to grow you, stretch you until you reach your full potential. And it is the word of the Lord. Wow. We submit it to wow. our Lord. Wow. Amen. Continue in the community of your faith. Yes. So many people are abandoning yes. the community. They yes. claim Bishop, they're, they're not leaving the faith, but they're leaving the community. Mm -hmm. It's true. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, tell my people, continue to belong to the community of faith. Com continue to belong to the local assembly. Continue to belong to the reformations. Don't, 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 don't forsake the assembling of your wow. Both. And that's a big thing. That's a big thing. That's yeah. a big thing. Because, like you said, so many people are doing this as they see fit within themselves. And they can easily justify it because it's a self consciousness, but it does not mean that it's correct. Absolutely. Continue with the faith, the power of the faith alone. I just believe that we've given the church just such a bad name in so many ways. Uh, of what we have experienced and all of the stuff that we have misinterpreted and all. Could you help us with that, Bishop Nixon? Because we really, as a whole, believers um, have left a lot of people, especially the young believers, confused with even whether to stay with God or not. Yeah. You know, um, hmm. I, I want to choose my words wisely because this has been something that has really been on my mind for a little while now. And um, just thinking about um, the a, a lot of the things that are being said centered around the church. Um, I was just telling somebody yesterday, in fact, that all of our problems, as much as we would like to contribute it to the church, didn't begin there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Much Thank of you. The, much of the dysfunction and much of the breakages that we have encountered in our lives did not begin there. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, in many cases, they were fostered there mm -hmm. and never, never really brought to uh, true deliverance and breakthrough. And then, of course, much of the issues that we have encountered is not necessarily church centered it's people centered yes yes whenever you go where other people are and you must engage and interact and exchange and there's expectation and then there's disappointment to expectation there's always going to be some level of cacophony that is fostered and nurtured and even in many cases matured mm -hmm. yeah. so as we grow our traumas grow and they and they mature right along with us. And if we do not um, get the deliverance or the help that we need, they explode and they become other things. So of course, when people express and expound on their experiences with the church, they always highlight the negatives uh, yes. that they have encountered or or that they have experienced. But the truth be told. The church has been more of a launching pad for many. It has been a foster home for others who may have come from disbandment, dismembership, uh, disfellowship from their families yeah. and have not had any. And so the mm -hmm. church becomes that community. Yes. That word community. The church has become that community where people yes. can conjoin and, and find mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and so on. And so it's a family away from a family. Um, so good. It has also been a platform. Many That's people so uh, would have never known their level of gifting and their gifting not be developed as, as well as it has been developed if it had not been yeah. for the church. The church has served a great purpose in the lives of, of so many people. 
Uh, it has been an, ed, a, an institution of education for many. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, people have been educated, and I'm not just talking about biblically, but even mm-hmm. concerning uh, you know, other matters and other other things in life, they've been greatly educated and and have been prepped and and prepared for life itself. Uh, so, it has been a resource center in many cases. People have gained employment uh, through through the church. Um, have also gained um, resources as it relates to uh, rations. And and things of that nature. There's so many, so many great so, attributes mm. that that come from the experiences that happen with the church. But the enemy comes in to to really throw off our experiences and the confession of our experiences. And just like in every other place, there will be justifiable grievances. Yes. Um, But the scriptures tell us to come, let's reason together. There are ways that we can handle our grievances as opposed to uh, exposing them as if they are the only experiences had within the church. But the church has been a tremendous blessing, a beacon in many communities. Mm -hmm. Um, And so our experiences with one church or two churches is not all churches. So there are so many great things that Mm -hmm. that can be said about the church. I hope that answered. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. It's so much wisdom in it. And it causes us to look back over our shoulders and recognize what we have experienced or even what we're saying. Maybe there's another way to put it so people can understand even the grievances that have happened. But so much wisdom in that, so much understanding in that, because we must understand that this is what he says. I, Jesus says, I build this. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking when you were talking about the liberties, I was thinking about New York Harbor where the Statue of Liberty stands. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things that America has always said, bring me your poor, bring me, bring it here. America says they will take care. And now everywhere immigrants are coming in. That was the cry. But the church makes the same cry. Whosoever will, let him come. Mm. And I think that that cry must be understood and taken very seriously, mm. especially the whosoever yeah. part. Because, because that's where that's where issues, and I just wanted to jump back in there because that's so powerful. That's where issues lie. You know, it's in the whosoever will. You know, anytime you have uh, driven into, uh, I'll just say New York City for for one, driven Mm. into New York City, flown into New York City, uh, coming in by train to New York City. You know, you can look at that city, that skyline. It's gorgeous. It 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 literally is beautiful. But there are once you get in the city, there are some truths in that city that I. God, it's very complicated here. And, and there are some parts that are not so beautiful once you get up close. And, and, and that's what I believe happens a lot of times with the church experience. The church itself is a beautiful place. It's a beautiful thing, the gathering of people. But when you look at the details of who's who within the, in the church, that's where you sometimes run into the not so pleasant uh, experiences from time to time, but it, it's oh, it, it is a beautiful place. It is a beautiful entity. I so agree. Another part of the prophetic word that we want to explore is in the beginning when it is stated. And welcome, Bishop Gilliard. We are so glad to have you. So glad you could join us. So grateful. Um, I'm sure you were probably listening backstage that prophet, the prophetic word that prophet pronounced on us. Uh, encourage my people to let them know I am committed, not concerned, but not thinking about, but committed. Can we throw that word up? Can you give me the definition of that word? I'm committed to their welfare. I am committed. Beautiful. Committed to their welfare. Amen. Bishop Gilliard, will you bless us in expounding on that commitment to the welfare? Uh, God bless again. Such a joy to see. 
and a privilege uh, by the grace of God to be here again on uh, today. Um, joyful in our conversation. And yes, I was on the back end uh, as Prophet Cook uh, so eloquently was speaking the heart and the mind and the intent of God. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we, if you would allow me, uh, whenever we speak of God, uh, while we are able to grab a concept of words uh, in our own understanding, we must bring into the conversation uh, as much as we are able to understand him that number one, he is not man. Uh, yeah. So bring that to the conversation uh, that we will understand that in debt, there is no way that we could really understand his commitment to us because we are only able to equivocate commitment in the way that we understand commitment. And so I think a lot of times that's why people miss God because they're looking for God in the way they have looked for man or unto man. Mm -hmm. And so they somewhat bring God down to an understanding of what man is. And so when we hear that word committed, we begin to think, how then have people been committed to us is the level of how or my understanding of how God is going to be committed to me. But we must first bring God out of the equivocation of man because he is not a man. I am not a man, comma. Sometimes we run that together, but I am not a man, comma. Thank you. Don't even compare me. That I should lie, neither the son of man that I need to repent, have I not spoken. And we know so it's this whole element in understanding this commitment to God is so intense. Uh, to me that it goes all the way back to Genesis 3.15, which mm -hmm. becomes the first messianic prophecy of right. where God then makes a commitment for the redemption of man. Mm -hmm. um, and I think sometimes we only think of even this week that we're in, Holy Week, is for the redemption of our sins. Um, but the Lord's redemption, it is not just to redeem you, but it is to restore. You. So it is through this redemption that we then become restored back to fellowship with God as Adam was. And I think a lot of times we are so waiting to get to heaven to go yeah. back to this place of perfected fellowship with God, uh, where I believe that the work of the cross the proof of the empty grave now does not just redeem me of my sins, but it restores me back to the place of fellowship with God as Adam walked with God. So I think as our prophet has said, the commitment of God to us for our welfare, and when we begin to understand and move our minds beyond, he is not just concerned about taking care of us physically, uh, because we are spirit beings. So when we bring in this concept of welfare, he is committed then to us being whole in our mind, body, and spirit, in our fellowship with him, and in our fellowship even with each other. So this commitment goes beyond provision of just things being taken care of in the earth realm. But this commitment now moves us to a place of understanding that anything concerns me, uh, he is committed to making sure that it does bring forth what he has intent. Now, if you allow me to just say what I feel, his yeah. commitment to me is because I am in the intent of him. Uh, mm -hmm. So it is not this element of where he just, oh, I'm just committed to any and everything. No, I am committed wow. to that which bears my image. I am committed to that which follows my direction. I am committed to that which is me because literally uh, I'm committed to my word. So I think when we begin to understand the safety of our lives is really being able to walk in the profound understanding of what does God have for me? What is his will for my life? So this intent of God to be committed to us, that whole understand of intense dedication, doing whatever he has to do, being a strategic mover, planner. Uh, he moves things that seem painful to us, but literally it's a part of his commitment to our overall welfare. He brings people in, takes people out, moves mm -hmm. us in 
for this stuff. So I just want the audience to not think of committed as the, a father would be committed of taking care of his children or uh, a husband and a wife and their commitment of their covenant. Yet yeah, that's the simplest form that we can think, but the depth of the presence of God in our lives to be committed to the intent. And so that's what I kept hearing him say when Prophet was saying that I am, I'm committed to my original intent for you. And my original intent was that you walked in fellowship with me and that you've been created in my image. And so I'm so committed to that, that even when you try to sabotage it, when you do self-destruction, I'm even committed to you beyond your own decisions. And so wow. this is where I rejoice in this word today because I realize um, that if I, were, if, I, if, I, if I just give God a little bit to work with, uh, just a little bit. everything that he has intended for my life will come to pass in this present world and even in the world to come. Thank you so much, Bishop. That, that, that's so powerful. I love the fact that you said, because of my intent, he is committed to me. I want, can we go back into that, Bishop Gilliard? Because um, I think that's very, very, very powerful. That word, because of my intent, he is committed to me. My yeah. intent. Would you go a little deeper yeah. in that? When, when we understand he's committed to his intent, which becomes my intent, because I'm a firm believer. Uh, where on. the scripture says, and I may be wrong and others can, you know, correct me on screen or off, but where it says that he gives us the desires of our heart. I yes. believe a posture and a positioning that a heart has finally captured the desires of God's heart. Um, so it's not the element of just saying, oh, I can desire something and then God's going to give it to me. Uh, I've been in places in my life that I desired to see the harm of enemies. <laughs> so I knew God was not going to bring that to pass. But it is when my desire becomes his desire, then he gives me that desire because now he's actually giving me what he always intended. And so I think there is a quest for us to find ourselves totally in the will of God, totally pleasing him, totally pursuing for his presence. And as uh, we were sitting back, I was sitting back, forgive me, and was jotting some things down. I even began to hear the Lord say to me, all of this is a part of understanding how to practice the presence of the Lord. So when we are practicing the presence of the Lord, we are now uh, dismantling the altar of our own presence. And so, so often, even when we come to God, it's too much of us in that approaching to him. So I think true altar experiences, true worship experiences. Thank you, Bishop Nixon. He said it so eloquently. Uh, and I know that's not the nature of what you brought me, but I have to piggyback off of something he said about the church. And I think the church has been one of the primary places to teach people how to practice the presence of the Lord. I don't think people would know how to get into the presence of the Lord individually if they had not been taught and exposed to it corporately. And so it is what I've learned at church that have taught me how to practice the presence of the Lord at home. And in that presence of the Lord, I really am now able to find his intent for my life and make his intent my intent. And this is where he gives me my desires of my heart because yes. my heart desires what he desires. And so he then is committed to my welfare because when he looks at me, he sees himself. And I think that is the whole component until we get to the place that we are a true reflection of the presence of God in the earth that God now becomes committed. And that's why he comes committed to this cause because he wants his presence to be represented right. And so when we represent the presence of the Lord correctly, then that becomes a drawing card to this lost world to say, I want what you have. But all of this to me falls into moving myself more into the intent of God, to reflecting the God and to being the God that represents him rather in the earth. I hope I came. Oh, yes, sir. Um, I was working with the guys for them to put up the word intent. 
having a mind, attention, or will concentrated on something or some end of a purpose. And that's where I got caught because sometimes we don't even know what the end is going to look like or be like. We just jump into stuff without even knowing that. Would you help us with that, Prophet Cook? Yeah. Uh, as Bishop is sharing with us, the overall go the overall goal of God huh? is to bring us to his intent. The purpose of the graces of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher is to mature us and bring us into the unity of the faith and then to be formed into the image of his son. What God seeks to bless is that which he intended always from the beginning. Uh, Psalms 138, verse 8, the A clause says, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Uh, your steadfast love, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. That's the English standard version. I, I look at that verse every day. Uh, mm -hmm. It is purpose that has spared me, but purpose has spared me for his purpose or his intent. So yes, the reason, again, if I could just backtrack for just a moment, the reason for his commitment to our welfare is his commitment to his intent, to his purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, as Bishop uh, Gilliard pointed out, we, we all have, you know, uh, desires that were not in conjunction or alignment with God's intent or God's desire, you know, uh, seeking vengeance on our enemy. Lord, you, 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 you know, you get them. Well, no, um, that's not my intent. Even though I will allow what they have done to you to work for you and not against you. Mm -hmm. It's, it's his intent that God is forever committed to and the way in which his intent comes to pass is our commitment to his commitment to his intent i, I like that part our commitment that's why that's the part i really want us to get to what this our com our commitment you so often we hear people say uh lord let thy will be done let thy kingdom come Yes. And I want to I want to please you. I want to do whatever you say do until yeah. we stop liking the process. <laughs> That's the, the issue is, you know, we all have cried out, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Oh, Lord. I believe until that, we yeah. till we get in the, yeah. Yeah. the process. When, and when this is why it's so important to hear what Bishop Gilliard is saying yes. to us. In, yeah. in our process, that we must be processed to get to the intent. Yes. Help us, Help us Bishop Nixon. <laughs> you know, I, I, mm. <laughs> I think trying to understand God is where we're going wrong. Okay. Um, he Come is. On. He is past our understanding. The, you know, the, the, Paul said it: the mystery, the Help mystery us. of God. Like the, you know, we keep trying to master the master. Come on, sir. You know, God is not inside of time trying to figure out what He's going to do with us. The the. The will of God for our lives have already already been predetermined. Come on, sir. He has predestined. You know, um, he he tells Jeremiah, before you were formed, I knew you. <laughs> like this is Come not. On. I'm not waiting on you to decide whether or not you want to do my will. I'm telling you what my will is for you before you even were formed. Come on, sir. This is my intent. Uh, you know, the the this is my mind concerning you. And the only thing I guess I would throw in there is that even before we know to choose God, the beautiful thing is that we were already chosen. And the reason why 
you can choose God is because he chose you to choose him. Like it, it just, it's just an amazing revelation once you come into that level of understanding, understanding. that my life is not my own. Yes. This is this is something completely outside of my understanding and even my control. If many of us were to have it our way, we would list and voice other things that we would like to get into, like to be involved with, and it just was not in the cards for us. It just, it, it, God had already decided. I um, know the thoughts. We use this scripture often to, to raise levels of praise in our sanctuaries. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, thoughts of good and not evil to give to you and expect it in. And we all, God's going to give you what you expected, but it's not your expectation <laughs> that God is looking to fulfill. It is his own. And so he has already charted out your course. He already knew that Saul would be rejected and that David would be chosen. Come on. He already knew that even in the in the sin of David, yeah. David would have his intent still and that the the hand of grace would not depart from David even in his mess up and in his hang up. That's why we have to now defer we have to live grateful Come and, on, and, and stop trying to investigate why God's hand is on people and why God didn't punish this one and why God didn't bring him in that one. He does what he has already willed to do. He's not waiting on you to do. He already knew what you were going to do before you yeah. did it. He already knew because he does not sit inside of time. He mm -hmm. holds time in the palm of his hand. Ooh. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. You exist in a realm that is outside of this realm. So, so you already knew my flaws, my hiccups, my hangups, my, my defects. You already knew. And so that's why the blood is so valuable because the blood serves as that propitiation and it serves as that mediation of the things you have yet to do <laughs> that he already knew you would do. So it is to have the mind of God and to know that the hand of God is upon your life. I'm telling you, it ought to have you doing jumping jacks, uh, car <coughs> You ought to be hula hooping. I mean, you ought to be doing every every kind of move you can do. The fact that God selected you before the foundation of the world. Yes. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. A oh, my God. Your people, one whom I have called out of darkness into my marvelous light. It, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It is. And I don't, mm, mm, mm. I just want our audience to ask the Lord to open up your mind, even the greater, mm -hmm. because of this concept, we're not talking about anything but God. And who knows God, but God, mm -hmm. he's just God. Uh, Bishop Gilliard, the way he even brought the intent to us was so magnificent, but we're not talking about the intent for you. No, <laughs> we're not talking about the intent. He's not talking about the intent. He's talking about this whole picture. Bishop Gilliard drew for us the whole picture of this redemption. Yes, yes. In one word, God's intent. That's yeah. it. God's intent. In one word, mm -hmm. the picture was drawn. God's intent, and I think that uh, you you hit it on. You all did. Uh, when you said, Bishop Nixon, when you said, trying to figure out God. See, that's, that's where we spend a whole lot of time trying to figure what is God really doing. You'll never know what God is really doing. His thoughts are so far above ours. But when you end it up with the spirit of gratitude, I'm just thankful. I'm just grateful that whatever it is. <laughs> 
whatever it is, he included me, whatever yeah. it is. So then I have the question. Praise uh, God. Mm. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, that alone can take you right on up into worship. Mm. Yeah. When Bishop Gilead was talking and the whole picture of the plan of salvation was drawn in front of us. Um, outstanding. It, it, it was like, oh my God. And the intent is God's intent and not Cynthia's intent. What do I then do, Prophet Cook? Because we're going to have to break some of these thinkings away and ask God to show us. What do I do then with my spirit of faith? If God's already predestined and he's already said things and he's already, he already has this intent for me. What do I do with my faith? Uh, well, I like to say this way, graduate to surrender. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I mean, both of my brothers have done so well and eloquently. Oh, wow expressing and, and and discussing this particular subject you know again it's it's it, it, it is the will of god that all men be saved it's the intent it's the purpose of god that all men be saved come into the knowledge that there is one god one mediator between god and man the man christ jesus who gave his life as a ransom for all to be testified of in due season this is what paul tells timothy the, the intent is that we would all be saved and we cannot be saved until we surrender to that as his will. This is his will. We who claim and, and lay hold of salvation, we all had a moment in time past where we surrendered to that. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the rest of our future, his intent for our life, it requires the continuation daily of surrender. There are days, I must admit, I don't know in the moment what he is doing, but Amen. I take peace in that it is still, it is still on a path for his intent or Amen. purpose Amen. to be achieved. Amen. So that you know, Bishop Nixon, this just data. I have to be honest with myself. You know, some of the stress that I have been under in the yes. past is, you know, as you said, Bishop, you know, trying to master the master. Yeah. But the, I, I think Bishop Gilliard, if, if if I if I'm correct here, is that our goal is to graduate in surrender. I surrender all, all to thee. It's. And it's a daily, I, I believe it's part of that cross that we pick up daily, you know, and in our attempt to follow him. It, it's, it's not, there's some things that uh, we, we also I'll bring under subjection. Maturity is going to bring about a casting away, a surrender of certain behaviors and things. You've lived long enough to deal with the penalties and the consequences and you just make a decision. I'm just not living like that anymore. I'm not going to do that. That That isn't, I think sometimes immature or younger believers or Christians are focused on behavior and not character. The character of surrender. I just, Lord, I've asked you to have your way in my life. Help me with the surrender to the process. Because it's, it's you know, and I'll defer with this. It's the, the key is my faith in him is demonstrated by my daily surrender. Because he has his purpose in mind. And, and when I am stressless, it is because I have surrendered to his will, even when I don't agree with the way he's exacting or executing the process, but I, I'm comfortable with it. I, you know, there are days I know what he's doing, other days I don't, but I'll, I know this. We know now that all things work together for the good, his good of them 
that love the Lord and have been called according to his purpose. So my prayer, and I conclude with this, is Lord, may I forever be a spouse to your purpose. Mm. Powerful. That's powerful. That's it. That's powerful. And the character of surrender. Bishop Gilead, because you've started us on this intent, help us. Uh, so much wisdom, so much wisdom. Help us in the character of surrender. <clears throat> Again, such powerful, uh, so much, so much. I'm just writing oh. I have two, three notepads in front of me, and I'm just writing <laughs> everywhere so much. Uh, if I go back to Bishop Nixon, if you allow me, just 30 seconds, I cannot. Uh, he said something that just dropped in my heart so strong that when we get to this understanding, uh, I heard a word just leap out in my spirit, and that word was freedom. And uh, as Bishop Nixon was talking and sharing, and I just began to hear the Lord say, that is the place of freedom that I want my people to get to, where they stop to live in a freedom to stop trying to figure God out. That, that was just so uh, for me in that moment, just to live in the freedom of stopping trying to figure God out and to understand um, you know, who knows the mind of God and who can give him counsel, who 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 can tell him what to do. Uh, oh. This is the freedom alone. And it moves us then to move us to this place of freedom to be able to understand the 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 character, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the strength of mm -hmm. being full of integrity and full of courage. Um, that, that word character that uh, prophet just brought to us, I feel it, it, that is part of the process. It is part of development too, as he said, graduation to surrender. Uh, mm -hmm. And when we begin to understand when we have character, it takes us being courageous uh, because to have this character, and he said not to so much be caught up in just the behavior of what we do, but the character moves you beyond the moment. Um, that character, that integrity, the you that people do not see, uh, because it is that which is below the surface that really then begins to fuel and to begin to move your behavior. Uh, many people are in how they behave, but they fail to understand that your behavior is a direct representation of your character. So if you change, try to change your behavior and don't change your character, you're just moving in moments and in actions. Uh, but that character is really what drives you. But it is a process. You know, it, it, it takes time. Uh, it takes time to fail. Uh, it takes time to be successful. It takes time to be fearful. It takes time to not be fearful. And I think all of these elements, we don't understand. And God now in his perfected state of who he is and who he has always been, if you allow me to say that he took a moment and pulled out of his perfection and came into flesh so that he could relate to us because he could not be an advocate of anything he did not understand. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to be an advocate, uh, you know, and fight for somebody, you, you've got to know how to be them. And so he became flesh. Uh, he, he had moments where his character was challenged. Uh, Bishop Nixon and Prophet said it, you know, we're, even Jesus was at that place. If there is another way uh, that this could not, I want this, I want your intent to happen. But if there's another way, can we go that route? <laughs> but then I come back to that place, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And so I think we fail to even sometimes listen to audience to understand that Jesus, the best of them, had moments where his character had to be developed. Uh, and, and he had to have the decision, do I make a shortcut to this? Uh, but the shortcut wow. not, would have not fulfilled. Um, wow. Uh, you know, the Holy Ghost was talking to me one day and said, if Jesus had not shed his blood, 
on a tree, uh, it, 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 it still wouldn't have worked <laughs> because the text says, cursed is he that hang on the tree. Uh, and that's where the curse was removed. The curse was removed because he hung on the tree. So it, it, it's not that he died, just came and died. If he had had a heart attack, it wouldn't have went the way it needed to go. Uh, it had to be the way God said it had to be. It had to be, uh, there. Had to be sacrifice. There had to be a component of understanding the altar. And so I want to say to the audience that we have to understand this process of courage integrity, strength, um, all of this is part of being built to who God wants us to be. And it is a process. Um, give yourself space to be human and allow your humanity to usher you into your divinity uh, that you begin to see God. And I'll stop with this, but you know, that whole element where we were talking about God and the Lord spoke to me and said, even when I revealed to you, reveal to you who I am, I've not changed. Revelation right. doesn't change God. It just shows us who God is. And I think so many times when people feel like if I can just get a revelation of God, then God's going to fit in some box mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that he's going to adjust to me. No, the revelation is just going to simply show you who he is and what he was always doing. And what, you know, oh, I finally got a revelation. It was always that. <laughs> it's just the understanding now that God will show you a side of him um, that was in hiding. Uh, 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 it, it was just in hiding. So the sovereignty of our God is that he is so, he's always right. He's always right. He's always right. And if he had put us in the water and made us swim and put fish on the land and made them walk, he still would have been right because he's God. Yeah. Now that's powerful. That is powerful. Well, Sunday's resurrection. And we know we have to go off the air, but Sunday's resurrection. Prophet Cook, what would be your word to our viewing audience for Sunday as they attend their resurrection? Well, the first thing I would say is please attend the in-person worship experience. Amen. Every one of us who sit in this space, we are pastors, and uh, we would encourage your attendance on this coming Sunday. And I would encourage also those who will be in attendance, come with a level of expectation, both to fellowship one with another, but also to fellowship with us as we fellowship with Christ and to embrace the message of the resurrection because it speaks of what he valued, which is the human life. The whole, the whole concept of salvation is God's demonstration that he values the human life to the point that he was willing to redeem it and continue in time to redeem those who will embrace the power of the resurrection of Christ. So come, 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 come join us and let's fellowship and celebrate. Bishop Nixon. You know, I, I think that for all of us, this week, going into this resurrection celebration and even the weeks to come, live knowing that you are on the winning side and that you have a God who keeps his promises. And he told them what would happen and he told them what he would do. And he did just what he said. You're on the winning side. The God that you serve has not lied and cannot lie. And more importantly, for all of us to remember that he is alive. Wonderful. Bishop Gilliard. Yeah, I was thinking of this. So she's maybe going to work her way to me. 
Uh, I, I tie into what Bishop uh, Prophet said really quick. I was, uh, when we got insurance, um, this has just hit my head. When we got insurance for the church, of course, that's all of us. Uh, <clears throat> and they said to me something. They said, our insurance will cover your offerings. If there was something that our offering was stolen or lost or whatever that day, but there's a Sunday, we will not cover your offering. We will not cover your offering on Easter Sunday. Wow. And it spoke volumes to me. And I'm sitting there like, what is going on? They said that this is the biggest Sunday. It should be the biggest. Well, they said it's the biggest in attendance, the biggest in receiving, the biggest. And just because of the holiday, we will not cover that. Wow. And as you all were sitting here, that spoke in my spirit. That, I mean, I'm going back 15, 20 years when we got this. And I'm like, why would the Holy Ghost bring that? He said, even the children of the darkness understand okay. the height of this day. Mm -hmm. That it is a day that those that bear my name are supposed to believe what has been said and to come together and to worship. And even in our giving, if you will allow me to say that this Sunday should be paramount. It should be seeds coming that would cause every church to over exceed any level of budget because it is the day that we celebrate what all of this is about. So I say my word to you is to be a good steward of your freedom. Be a steward of this day by number one, believe in the day. Do not see this as some fairy tale or some uh, manipulation of a story to get you to do. Be a steward of your faith and believe yeah. that there is an empty cross. And then in being that steward, practice out what this all is about, which is that I'm not just going to be a steward of the day, but I'm going to be the steward from this day for the rest of my life. Yes. That I now would take a burden to believe that if I can be redeemed, be restored, and even be resurrected, so can others. So it becomes a day that we should rekindle our love for lost souls and to go out and do all that we can to see as many people to believe this same gospel and to know, and I stop, to know not just what happened, not just he died, not just he rose again, but to know why. And that's really what the Spirit of the Lord has been dealing with me since Sunday. So many of my people celebrate what, but they don't embrace why. So that Sunday, don't just celebrate what he did, but oh boy, be happy by why he did. Wow. God bless you. This has been such a wonderful time together. And I know so many people have been blessed and that God strengthen and keep you as leaders. And thank you for all that you have done to enhance our lives. God bless. We celebrate our prophets. As we will begin to think about what I would say to you. And as Bishop Gilliard was speaking, I thought about the time that I was in the islands, and especially this island was Barbados. And I was speaking there. Early Sunday morning, they came to get me. And it was so very early, and I couldn't really understand or comprehend the why of it. Until service time, I heard people beginning to sing coming down the road, beginning to praise God coming down the road. And they all were not seeing the same thing. But you knew that it was a divine cry of praise out of their spirit. Can I ask you, on this Sunday, just don't get out of your car and walk into church with your finery on. This Sunday, don't just get up and start getting dressed like we normally do. But this Sunday, when you're close to the house of God that, that you worship, Get out of the car, praising God. Walk into the sanctuary, praising God. For he has done for you what no human could ever do. He has opened the doors for you. 
that no man can ever shut. What would it be like if saints everywhere got out of their vehicles, got to their church doors, and the moment you touched it, you started praising and singing? Could you imagine how many guests would be blessed? Could you imagine how many souls would be delivered? Could you imagine the height of worship you would take the house into because of you? Just one soul, and that's yours. Make it a difference this Sunday. Make it an astounding difference. Bring your seed and offer it with great joy and adoration. And let one of those seeds be the seed of thank you, gratitude, because you didn't have to choose me, but you did. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon and God bless Resurrection Sunday. The Lord is speaking. You have entered New Era with Prophet Cynthia G. West in consultation with the Prophetic Council, Bishop Anthony Gilliard, Bishop Darius Nixon, and Prophet Andre Cook. Numbers 12 and 6 states, and he said, Hear my words, if there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak with him in a dream. A new era has begun. <laughs>